going on, everybody? And greetings and salutations. Happy holidays. Uh, for those of you who celebrate Christmas, happy, uh, Merry Christmas. And uh, hopefully you have a happy New Year. So, with that being said, you get a very Christmas edition of my SmackDown review. Uh, this was pre-taping events. I don't. I think next this coming Monday. It, well, I don't think I'll be doing a review for Raw and SmackDown. I think Raw and SmackDown is just a best of 20, 2023 for both Raw and SmackDown. And I think then the following week is that. So, this, so yeah, you you getting a SmackDown review. I also got the re after this. I'm gonna be doing Rebel Moon and Aquaman. But Aquaman and Rebel Moon in that order. <laughs> With that being said, let's look at my notes here. Uh, they did, they do, they did a recap. They kicked off with a recap of last week of what happened at the end of the show with Randy Orton and them, and then the return of AJ Styles. And with that being said, that's how they kicked off Monday Night Raw with AJ Styles coming out to the ring to basically get like a little summary of why he did what he did. Um, he well he. He got into it why he did what he did a little bit later on in the promo, but he just basically came out and said that he wants Randy Orton. I mean, Randy Orton wants Roman Reigns. Randy Orton wants Roman Reigns, and uh, AJ Styles wants Roman Reigns. I mean, AJ Styles, um, LA Knight. But he said it more like, I want, I want Roman Reigns at the World Rumble. Randy Orton wants Roman Reigns. At the Roman Rumble, and age, uh, LA Knight just want Roman Reigns anytime, anywhere, any place, and he said he don't blame him. It, but he said I don't give a damn about any one of them because he want Roman Reigns first. He but he he said not that they can't have Roman Reigns; they just gotta have him after he gets done with him. That he wants to take everything from Roman Reigns after they try to take everything from him. Side note, I didn't say it last week, but uh, just like Randy, AJ Styles came back a diesel as hell. He was in, he, he's in a lot better shape than he was uh, when he got put out. Um, but yeah, AJ Styles came back. I mean, he just came back, but said that uh, he, he, he wants Randy Orton. Um, I keep saying Randy Orton. Roman Reigns at the World Rumble, and then out comes Randy Orton. Who basically says that he wants Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble and that AJ Styles can have him um, after Roman after Randy gets his hands on Roman. <clears throat> and then LA Knight proceeded to came out and said the same thing that he wants Randy, he wants Ray, uh, Roman Reigns, and that they were uh, and that they had something in common that he don't have in common with them is that. Roman Reigns took both because they all they both mentioned how they both got taken out. Uh, AJ Styles for like three months, Randy Orton from tw uh, for a year and a half. Um, but they both he says that while y'all got taken out, y'all falling at the feet of the bloodline. I I didn't get taken out, which means I should get Randy Orton first, and that he will get Randy Orton first. But this will bring out Nick. All this who basically said that. This this is a quite a predicament that they we find ourselves in, and that every last one of them had a legitimate claim to wanting Roman Reigns. So he said the best way to solve this is they all have a legitimate claim, and he can't deny either one of them. Is that at New at SmackDown's New Year's uh, Revolution, there will be a triple threat match to determine who gets Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. Now this. If Roman Reigns was there in the show, so this will bring uh, him into conflict with Nick Aldis. More on that in a minute. Uh, AJ Styles then uh, ended the promo by saying that he uh, he said, "Fine, whatever it takes to get to Roman Reigns," and he said, "As for his match with Solo Sokoa later on tonight, if he see e either one of them, Randy Orton, LA Knight." anywhere near this ring doing his match he said he gonna take them out too um this this part actually happened after the first match well I'll get to that never mind 
So the first match was a, which I think it was a, was it an eight woman or six woman? Let's see, it was Alina, Bianca, Sansi, and Mia Yim. Yeah, that was a, a uh, that was an eight woman tag match against Damage Control of everybody except uh, Dakota Kai. Basically, instead of just going down who was all, it's basically uh, uh, Bailey and uh, uh, Bailey Oscar. Uh, and Kyrie saying, Wait a minute, did I get that right? Yeah. No, that's only three. There oh, was somebody else that I'm missing? Oh, was somebody else that I'm missing? Because it's only. Because it was Zelina, Bianca, Sansi, and Mia Yim. That's four. <laughs> Versus Damage Control. Uh, Bailey, Oscar. Why do I feel like it was only three? I don't know, it was an eight woman tag. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> My mind drawing a blank. It was an eight woman tag. <laughs> uh, because it w it was a pretty good tag team match. I'm a little bit thrown off here. Uh, because I can't because I can't remember. Cause I feel like that's because that's only three: Bailey, Oscar, and Kyrie. Saying there had to be somebody else with the teaming with them. Why do I feel like it was a four on three? Because only Dakota Kai, Bailey, Oscar. Yeah, that's that's four. Uh, Dakota Kai was not involved in the match. Oh wow. Yeah, because why there was it was Alina Vega, Bianca Belair, Sansi, and Mia Young versus uh Damage Control. And it was a good match. I'm gonna get, I'm sorry guys, I'm all thrown off by that. Because I can't my mind is just wrapped around like why do I keep why do why do I feel like I'm forgetting someone? But uh but yeah, it was a pretty good match. Uh, I enjoyed it. The, it was a great eight woman tag. Um, Isla Dawn and Alba Fire had an appearance here. It was like a they uh, hot, instead of a, a, a Halloween Havoc match, they called it a Holiday Havoc match, and it was it was like a tornado tag. It was an eight woman tornado tag match, basically, or eight woman tornado tag with a match like hardcore rules. Basically, you could use weapons or anything. And in a tornado tag, of course, you could use weapons and that's how that's why I said they was great busting over in gifts and taking out uh, weapons like one gift had like a trash can in it, another one had like, a chair in it they used uh, Kindle sticks or candy cane sticks um, but then there was two big presents um, that was basically down, uh, aligning the ramp and they went to uh, uh, which we call Oscar and Kari saying they went to go uh, they would go open it and would get a surprise from uh, it was a surprise. That's what Issa Dawn and Elba Fire was in, and they would attack them and get rid of Oscar and uh, Kyrie Sane for Bailey. Uh, I think Bailey took the pinfall. Uh, oh, that, it, I, it took me to I got to the end and realized. <laughs> fucking e, e, the women's champion EO Sky. Like I knew I was forgetting someone. It was EO. Jesus, do you, that's bad that she's the women's champion. I forgot that she was part of Damage Control for a minute. <clears throat> but yeah, EO Sky. That it was. That's why I was about to, when I, I realized when I said baby, I'm like no, baby didn't take it. It was EO. They're like, that's who the fourth member was. It was EO. <laughs> Base they put I think uh yeah they put EO through the table and me and Young got the uh victory pin on E on EO Sky which set up which is a which is an out of nowhere push. That's why I like this match so much because this was out of nowhere. Like there was no backstage rumors, at least that I heard of on this, but out of this match she uh me and Yim is going for the first time ever is gonna have an opportunity that I know of for a women's championship match. Now, granted, she's not going to win, but 
because she got the pinfall on EO Sky uh, at Halloween Havoc, she will be uh, going one on one with EO Sky for the uh, women's uh, championship, the WWE Women Championship, which is uh, very good. Which is very good in my opinion. Uh, then we got the Roman Reigns promo where he uh, to he told he after a funny little moment with Jimmy trying to hype up Solo. Uh, Roman as uh, Paul Heyman, who the general manager was, and he informed him that it was Nick Aldis. But I like how he, he did like the James Bond stuff. He was like, it was Aldis. His name is Nick. Nick Aldis. <laughs> and he said, bring him to me. And then he, he was like, well, let me in. If you may, can I prep you on him? But he was like, no, no prepping, no nothing. Just bring him to me. So then later on, he would, I think afterwards, Come yeah, just get this out of the way now, so I can remember. So I don't have to remember to go back to it. I think this was like after the the Dragon Lee match, which is the next match. Uh, they went back, and Nick Aldis, uh, he told because uh, by this time, um, both Jimmy and Solo was gone. It was just only Romeo and Paul. He asked Paul to leave, and he basically questioned Nick about his. He asked Nick, you know, did you were the one who made the match for? The triple threat match, and you the one who booked Solo uh, versus AJ Styles. He said those were good ideas, but he said you want to know what would have been a better idea if you run that, if you would have ran that by me. He said if you would have, he said that's how things went with Adam Pierce. But he said he he said you're you, basically now you're trying to insult me. He said that he's not Adam Pierce. Alan Pierce is more middle management. He said he's upper management. He's more. He said the. Uh, he said the bill stops. Uh, starts and stops with him, and that he. Uh, uh, he and Forrest Roman don't. Like the regardless of what he thinks, he said he don't have to answer to Roman, and he don't have to. Uh, and it doesn't start and ends with Roman. It starts and ends with him, and that he said Solo is a big boy. He he, he said I would love to see. I, I know me and the fans would love to see Solo versus AJ Styles, and he would also love to see the, the fans would, and him would love to see the triple threat match between Roman Reigns, LA Knight, and AJ Styles. And he's especially looking forward to the winner of that match facing him at the Royal Rumble. So on that he doesn't he doesn't too appreciate Roman being champion. He looking for Roman to lose the championship. Um. This ups visibly upsets Roman, um, which he he hates the fact that he can't. It feel like he can't control Nick Aldis like he did with Adam Pearce. Uh, then we get to the next match, which is uh, Dragon Lee versus Butch for the uh, North NXT North American Championship, which was a good match because you got two people who are not only high flyers with well you have two people who are high flyers and one who is also a submissive specialist and a technician specialist and uh butch and this was a good match they went back and forth i i like how at first like the crowd really wasn't into it but when they had this one exchange they had when they just went back and forth exchanging moves and reversing and countering and doing all that the crowd got into it because the people was like, holy crap, hold up. The people, the crowd came alive and they finally got into this match. And from that point on, with the crowd's involvement, that match got a little bit better because the crowd was into it. So you got a little bit into it when you heard the crowd get into it. And I'm like, okay, okay. For the first time, I actually like seeing a Butch match because I like, I like when Pete Dunn when they let him, just, when he was Pete Dunne, they had his matches. He was, he was, it was always brutal and good. But they have he was like toned down when he got to the main roster. But this was the first time like we got a hint of Pete Dunne, and we got a hint he might be going back to being called Pete Dunne because they said he was going through a little bit of a identity crisis. But um, the match was good. This, we got to see some Spanish flies, some good reversals, and some luchador. But in the end. Dragon Lee would hit his, uh, I forgot what they call his finisher, but he would hit his finisher and uh, retain the NXT North American Championship. Uh, we did get the, the next, we got the next round. We got the semi, the first of the semifinal rounds for, uh, for uh, the, uh, I forgot the damn, um, I had another brain fart. The U.S. Championship uh, Tournament. And this was Kevin Owens versus 
Carmelo has, and this was a good one. This was this just like the uh, the NXT North American Championship match was good. They had Kevin Owens and Carmelo has worked well together. Um, though it, I like the fact that Kevin Owens, even though you knew Kevin Owens was winning this match, he put Carmelo over. Cause he like Carmelo looked it real good in this match, and I have a strange feeling that he he's getting ready to get called up to the main roster, um, and he, I like I always said this, the next people to get called up to the main roster. I might not say this in my I might have said this in my videos, but if I hadn't, the next people to get called to the main roster is going to be Carmelo Hayes and uh, Braun Breaker and some more. Uh, NXT women's uh, after he's Tiffany Stratton is gonna be one of them. Roxanne, Roxanne Perez, you know, there's gonna be some people getting called up soon here. But this was a good match. Um, I like the uh, the spike DDT from the top from the ropes that Kevin did on Carmelo Hayes, and Carmelo Hayes sold it beautifully. Carmelo Hayes is a good seller. He's one of the people that's a good seller, and I like that. Uh, they got they had some good back back and forth some kickouts. But in the end, Kevin Owens got the victory, and he will move on to the finals of who will win of the who will be the winner, who and he will face the winner of the next match, which is Bobby Lashley versus Santo Escobar. Um, during the match, because it wasn't after the match. During the match, we got a Canyon Cross promo. I have to mention this here because it was a very important because. As you know, as you've been following wrestling like I have, you've been following the backstage rumors, we know that two tag team, two former tag teams that was released by WWE has, who were secret, who have been see, already been re-signed to WWE um, in the past, for the past months, almost the whole year. Uh, if you don't know who I'm talking about, the ALP, the Authors of Pain, they been, they have been, he, they was one of the teams when Triple H took over, he was one of the people they resigned, but they had nothing for them, so they kept them off TV. But now it's, it's we starting to get a, a promo for them, and get that's what carrying across the promos from last week was leading to. Because in the promo, it was only quick, like the one on quick flashes, like shots. But you see a silhouette of the, uh, the authors of pain with a third person, and I forgot who the the, middle, the guy that was in the middle with the glasses on was. But apparently he's going to be, they're going to be starting this new faction with Karrion Cross, And he, the guy in the middle is going to be leading them. Um, I don't, or he's going to be like the manager of the faction. But I think the leader of the faction is going to be Karrion Cross. So it's going to be Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain with this guy as they like manager. Um, uh... But yeah, that was the significance of that. But then, but then we get to the Bobby Lashley versus Central Escobar match, which was a was a pretty good big man versus the Luchador match. But you, but the true thing was, you like Bobby Lashley about to win this because how can how can possibly realistically can Santos Escobar beat Bobby Lashley, right? And they basically did this by having by bringing back to the main roster, back to SmackDown. Uh, two mysterious dudes who end up coming to help Santos by beating up on uh, Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins, and while the referee distracted, help them uh, get the help uh, Santos Escobar get the a cheap shot on um, Bobby Lashley and roll Bobby Lashley up for the pin. I think he had Bobby Lashley tights too, and the two masks, Lucha, the mask dudes with Luchador masks on, reveal themselves to be Alberto Carrillo and. Uh, Humberto Carrillo and Angel Garza. I almost forgot Angel Garza's name. I thought I had got them mixed up, but yeah, it was Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo. Back on the main roster, I guess the new version of Gato Del Fantasma. Uh, but yeah, Santos Escobar will win, and he will go on to face Kevin Owens at, in two weeks at New Year's Revolution. And the win and as you know, the winner in that will uh, face Logan Paul. We did get promos from Logan Paul, too, by the way. Who they, who was like pre-recorded? Was talking about he was talking about how um, he how he dissatisfied with the fact that he had to face the winner between Kevin Owens and um, and Santos. That's why he also did one when, when it was he did one for each one that you know for the matches when they before it was known that it was going to be either Santos or Kevin Owens to face him, and um, he basically dogged out like. Uh, Santos and Carmelo Hayes as well, Bobby Lashley. 
he said none of them was good to take the title from him. Um, oh, there was one. There was a promo with uh, AJ Styles and his OC buddies. I almost forgot about that. Uh, where they basically seems like they on the outs with each other, and then we get to the. Um, we get to the uh, main event, which is Sol Sokoa versus AJ Styles, which was a good main event match. To which Solo, um, Solo and AJ worked well together too. Yeah, I, I like how they work well together. They, the big Simone versus AJ Styles, but AJ held his own. I like this new version of AJ. He don't wear his usual tights, his usual jacket. He's more like this. Dark brooding version of AJ Styles. He wear he just wear like jeans now and a belt, and dark, everything's all black. <laughs> it's no, it's black like black and white. I think he the AJ part of his gloves got the uh got white on it still, but it's like white and black. I like this new brooding version of him. Um, but yeah, in the end, so, uh, AJ Styles will win due to uh, disqualification because Roman would attack AJ Styles. And then this will bring out Roman, uh, um, Randy Orton, and Eddie Knight to help even the odds. But they start arguing amongst each other. AJ Styles, uh, Randy Orton, and Eddie Knight, because LA because AJ was very clear he didn't want them nowhere in, near the ring. They try to explain they didn't come out to help him. They just came out to beat up on the bloodline, and he would attack both of them, which would call it all all out brawl between all three men. As you know, they start fighting over. Who, who will beat up on AJ because uh, I think he hit LA Knight first and then LA Knight started beating up on him but Randy Orton tried to stop him but then LA pushed Randy Orton and then they got to fight and then all three men got to fighting each other and it, it, they ended the show with like Jimmy and Solo tried to go in there and attack them but Roman was like no let them do, let them like fight each other and they ended the show on that note this was a okay show not too they, they moved the story it was more focused on the focus was mostly on the United States and Roman Reigns. A uh, little bit, little other than that, story was moved. You could t obviously tell this was you know, shot back to back with the other SmackDown, so they was kind of they, they kind of didn't want to do too much and reveal too much and have too much leaked out because of it being shot back to back. But overall, this was a solid six out of ten SmackDown. Nothing too. Nothing too special, nothing too great, but I am looking forward to this new format and now bring it on uh, not how they've been doing with NXT, now they doing with the main roster. But you let me know in the comments down below what you thought and if you enjoy my brain farts throughout this review, you, you 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 hit this button right here. Bam with this finger. With all of my WWE reviews and if you enjoy the video so much you want to support the channel, then all you got to do is hit those buttons because it helps the channel grow. And we are growing peace. I mean, not peace, but thank you to the new members for subscribing. We got new members of the tribe, people. And welcome. I enjoy you. Thanks for your subscribe. Even if you don't watch your video, I still appreciate that you took the time out to hit that button. Everything helps. And as always, if anyone reveals more amazing color, they go anywhere because I got more. Peace.